apostles that are in the Bible that wrote a lot of the, the Bible because they were there and they heard the words directly from Jesus. They were eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses of his, of his death, of his suffering, of his resurrection. And so the apostles that were the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not all of those were apostles, but they were all people that were intimately familiar with, uh, with, the, with the early Christian church and everything. And, uh, and so they said, they said this about putting on the, the armor of God. And uh, my husband died about five years ago. And when he used to sit in his chair over there and do his devotional, and I would be over here getting ready, and he would be reading the Bible and reading. And said, he, I would see him. He would stand up, and, he, and this the armor of God that I'm telling you, he would, he would do this like the helmet of salvation and the shoes of the preparation, and he'd put them like that, the sword of the Spirit, the the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the mm -hmm. shield. And so I want to read these to you. And I, I would like to make a suggestion to you that every single morning when you get up, that you put on this armor of God. And as you put it on, these words are powerful. They're very powerful. And these words are the words that, that, uh, that God inspired Paul to write. And... Christians do this, not only in our church, in our Seventh-day Adventist church, but lots of Christians do this. And it helps, and it protects, and it is very meaningful. And I think this will be something that will help you. And as you do this, I want you to think deeply about each item and about each thing, and think how the Lord is protecting you with this one. It, start, it, it starts out, kind of with an introduction to it it says finally brethren be strong in the lord and in the and stand in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you can stand against the devil's schemes for we wrestle not against flesh and blood not against an enemy here on earth that we can see or get our hands on but with the darkness of spiritual beings who were once in heaven and now using their authority and power <coughs> to try to rule the world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's why all over the world, a lot of the, the demons have control of people in high places, and they used to be in high places. That's why you must put on the whole armor of God. You must put on the whole armor of God and stand, not giving an inch of ground to the devil. So when the fighting is over, you'll still be standing. Therefore, stand. Tighten the belt of truth around you. The belt of truth means the word of God. That is what the belt of truth is. And every single word that is written in the Bible is true. So you want to put on the belt of truth and secure it around yourself. In other words, you take that Bible and you take that word of God and you read it and you study it and you believe it. And when you come across something, you say, Lord, I believe you. When he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And your response is, Lord, I believe. I believe that you saved me. I, I know that you died on the cross for my sin. I know you died for me and I believe you. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So you tighten the belt of truth securely around yourself. Then, the next one is you cover your chest with the breastplate of Christ's invincible righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus. He's the only one that has ever lived, that has lived a perfect life. No sin. He, from the time he was little, he lived a perfect life. And because he lived a perfect life, he was a perfect sacrifice. And he died for us because he was the only one that had perfect righteousness because of his perfect life. And so because of that, we put on that perfect righteousness that he gives us. And in order for him to give us the righteousness that he, that he gives, I want to give this to you. In order to do that, he had to die on the cross. It was very expensive for him to be able to give you and give all of us his righteousness. It's a righteous robe. He invites us to his wedding, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And you've read the part in the Bible, every person was giving a wedding garment to put on. But one man thought, ah, oh, 
I want to use my own clothes. I like my clothes better. So he wanted to come in his own righteousness. The Bible teaches us our righteousness is like filthy rags. It's nothing. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Only Jesus has perfect righteousness. And he gives that righteousness to us because he is God. And he has the ability to give it to us. All we have to do is say, yes, Lord, I take it. I believe in your righteousness. And we put it on. And then when God the Father looks at us, he sees the perfect righteousness of Jesus there. Not us. He doesn't see us. We have our face here, but the, the wedding garment that he puts, that God gives us to put on is the righteousness of Christ. And that is Jesus' perfect righteousness that he did. So yes, his righteousness was incredibly expensive. And we say, we say it's an outrageous act of love what Jesus did for us, to leave his beautiful, glorious home in heaven to this dark, dark world where people were treating him mean, hated him. All of his life we see how mean people were to him. And he only went around and helped people. He healed people. He, he healed the blind. He healed the deaf. He made the lame walk. He only did works of righteousness and goodness. He fed the people that were hungry 5,000 one time, 4,000 another time that people were following him and it was too late for them to go home and be able to eat. He fed the people. So Jesus only did works of goodness and righteousness and holiness, but people were jealous of him because he was gaining more favor than the Pharisees and the priests and the leaders of the church in his day mm -hmm. were wicked they, yeah. in that they were not believing Jesus was... He, they had plenty of evidence to see. The things that he did, nobody could do except God. Nobody had ever healed a man that was born blind. But Jesus healed him. And nobody could do the things of healing that he did. But Jesus did it. Jesus did it. And then he was rejected. He was rejected because of jealousy. Because of he's gaining more power than us from the Pharisees and the rulers. And they wanted to put him away. And, and the chief priests did do that. So, so he puts on, getting back to the armor of God, the breastplate of Christ's invincible righteousness. And then he says to put on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace in Christ. So we put on those shoes every day. Put on those shoes. And the gospel of peace in Christ is the gospel that is revealed in the Bible, in the Bible only. Not what man says, not what this person or that person says, but what does the Bible say? I want to believe, and I want to teach, and I want to practice what the Bible says, and that's what I'm going to believe. And that's what I'm going to study, what the Bible says. Not so, the precepts of men. Not that's the right. precepts the of men. Of men. <laughs> yeah. Traditions. Above all, take the False shield of faith. And the shield is very important because it, because it stops, um, it stops all of the, the fiery darts of the wicked one. So we want to stop the flaming arrows which Satan sends your way. You have been receiving flaming darts from Satan. He's been doing that to you all of your life. And now you're going to say, no, you cannot have any more time, any more of me. You can't have me. I belong to Jesus. Amen. And so you are going to belong to Jesus. And he is going to be the one. You put your armor on every day. No more flaming arrows, which Satan sends your way. And you believe it. Do you believe it? It's out of the Bible. Do you believe it, that, that when you do that and you put on the armor of God and the shield of faith, now, when you say the shield of faith, you're saying, I believe. What do you believe? I believe in every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what I believe. I believe what this Bible says. I believe it. All of the words that are in red are words from Jesus. I believe every single word of it. And I trust what God says. He's the one that I can trust. Not what man says. Not what my friend says. Not what I say. Not what my brother says. I believe what God says. And what he says, I'm going to stand on. And so after you put on that 
that uh, shield of faith, and I want you to picture it as a shield that's going all around you. Satan can't get to you in any way. I, I told them, you, you saw Star Trek, where they, they would zoom people here and there, and did you ever see it? Uh, and then they had, they had it like a shield. And they would zoom them around. Well, that's just a, a you know a silly movie, but the, but you get the picture there where they were totally surrounded with a shield on top, on their sides, all the way around. And that's how the shield of God is. Not just like the Roman army that had a little shield like that, or or a windshield like in our car. The shield of God goes all around you, and it's totally surrounding you, so it protects you from the evil one. And that's what we want, protection from the evil one. And that's why we, when you put that on every day, I want you to think about that. There's no way that he can get through to you. You're not having a Ouija board anymore. So then the helmet of salvation. So now you have completed putting on the defensive part of the armor. Now you're gonna put on an offensive part of the armor. And that is by taking the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit we don't have to wonder what the sword of the Spirit is. It says in the Bible, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And so when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he said to Satan, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God, but him alone shall you serve. Get behind me, Satan. And he quoted scripture. And so that's why we want to saturate our mind with the Bible. So that is that. And then the last the last piece of armor that you put on is something that you don't really see. It's prayer. You pray for the power of the Spirit at every encounter. Because your life depends upon it. Amen. And you be alert to the needs of your brothers and sisters. You are our sister. You have made us aware of us. Uh, of a, of a situation so we are alert to, to your needs right now we are alert to your needs that's why our brother prayed prayed for you before you go home we'll have another prayer we are praying for you because because we are <coughs> alert to the needs of our brothers and our sisters and so that's a command that jesus is giving us be alert to those that are around us and then this is paul speaking pray for me that god will give me the right words to say when i stand before caesar and that the Lord will help me to share the gospel fearlessly to all who are there, even if it leads to my conviction. For I am an ambassador in chains because of the gospel, and pray that I will defend it boldly and without fear. And so that's for us too. That wasn't just for Paul in his day. That's for us too, for us to be able to, to defend the gospel boldly. But you need to know the gospel, and you are learning the gospel. You have rejected a false gospel and you are saying no I can see the Lord has showed me that that what I have here is not true it's false and so now you are seeking but I want you to know that God is seeking you the good shepherd went after his sheep and he didn't stop he left his 99 sheep in the sheep fold the sheep pen and he went after the one lost sheep and he didn't stop until he found that sheep. And then he gathered it up in his arms and he set it on his shoulder and he carried it home. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is seeking you. L look at your, we have all been in this predicament. The lost sheep. I'm a lost sheep. He is. We all are lost sheep. You're a lost sheep. Jesus is seeking you. And he's not going to rest till he has you securely in his arms. Mm -hmm. And you're making steps in the right direction you are reaching out and you are making steps you are studying the bible you are learning and you are growing and don't forget that jesus is right there by you every step of the way he's looking for you he's seeking and he wants you you're his child he loves you very much and you're his child he doesn't want satan to harass you no more harassment no more trying to get to you through other people or other means you might be at other people's houses, too, and they might be people who have allowed Satan to come in through rock music or some other thing. And there, you might come into a house that people are drinking alcohol and they're drugs, doing drugs. They're giving their mind or their heart over to Satan. And so if you come into a situation like that, 
they have given their mind and heart to Satan, and Satan might say, oh, here's another victim. I might try, you know, he might try to get to you. So unless you have your armor on all the time, every day, he, he can get through to you. So you just remember, when you have your prayer in the morning, it only takes a couple minutes to open up to Ephesians 5 and read this. Six. Every day. Every single day. Don't let a day go by without it. Amen.